doing today? My name's Eric. As always, I want to thank you for coming by and checking out my video today. On this episode of Smoking, I'm going to show you how to make a smoked rotisserie pork loin with a maple bourbon honey glaze. Boy, that's a complete sentence, huh? So I got this wonderful pork loin, and what got me motivated to try this is I just got my Denali 605 uh, Pro Grill. Uh, it came with a rotisserie, and I've done a rotisserie chicken before, but I was trying to think, what else can I do on a rotisserie? So when we were at Sam's Club and I saw they had these big pork loins, I thought this would be perfect to fit on the rotisserie. So I had like an eight and a half pound one that I just cut in half. So half of it went in the freezer for a later cook, and this half is going to be more than enough to feed myself and my family today. And I'm going to season it up with some Suckle Busters Honey Barbecue Rub. And then during the last part of the cook, I'm going to make this homemade bourbon maple honey glaze. I got some pure Wisconsin maple syrup. None of that artificial maple flavored syrup. You want to get the real maple syrup. I got some... Pure all natural honey, also from Wisconsin. And I'm going to bring up some bourbon from my bar downstairs. And we're just going to mix equal parts, put it in a saucepan, simmer it. It's going to make a delicious, sweet glaze that's going to go wonderful on this pork. So stick around, guys. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. Let's get cooking. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to do is season this thing, okay? Like I said, I cut a big one in half. There's a little bit of fat on the back, but that's okay. You don't want to cut it all off. Just if you got some big clumps or something, that's what you want to kind of remove. This is going to be in a rotisserie, so everything's going to get evenly cooked, okay? So all I'm doing here as a binder is just using some Dijon mustard. Since this is going to be on a rotisserie and constantly turning, I, I definitely want to use a binder. Normally I'm not a binder guy, but I'm thinking in this situation with the rotisserie, it's certainly not going to hurt. And if you've never used mustard, you know, don't worry about it. It's not going to taste like mustard when we're done. That'll all cook away, just like so. And then as I mentioned before, I'm using Suckle Busters Honey Barbecue Rub. It says pork and chicken. I used this before, it was pretty good. Well, let me see if I can pop that baby open. And you know how this is, guys. We're just gonna apply a nice amount of this rub. Now, don't be afraid that you're using too much because this is a big piece of meat. And you definitely wanna get it on all sides. All right, guys, okay. we're gonna do that. I'm gonna roll it over here. We're gonna do the other side. And, you know, I'm not cooking this for a couple hours, but I want to kind of just put this rub on. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to truss it, which is a fancy word for tying some string on it, just because it is going to be in a rotisserie, and I just want it to hold its shape as it cooks. It's going to get more tender, and it's not going to hurt. We're going to put a little on the side. Yeah, and then we'll just do the other side here, guys. You know how that works. So let me get this completed, guys, and I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to show you how we're going to truss this up. Fancy word for tying some string on it just to keep it, keep it shape. And like I mentioned, make sure you get the sides. I'll continue to do this, guys. I'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, so the next thing I did is I cut some butcher twine into eight equal pieces. I think eight will be enough. You know, you're going to cut how many you think is necessary based on the length of your pork loin. Kind of had the pork loin sitting off here in a tray. And let me see here. Uh, maybe I won't need eight. Let's just do maybe seven. We'll see. I'm just going to lay it on top. And now I'm going to take my glove off. Because this is going to get messy anyway and I kind of need my fingers. So we're going to just tie these strings on there. Like I said, I'm going to try to evenly space them. And we don't have to get fancy with, with what, how we're tying, okay? This is a real basic, if you know how to tie your shoe, you know how to tie this knot, okay? We're just basically going to lace it through once, like you're tying a basic knot, and then we're going to lace it through a second time, okay? And that's it. And then we're going to pull, and as you pull, the neat thing about doing it this way is that it's going to hold it in place. I'm just going to rearrange it a little bit better because 
I didn't get it completely under. We want this to look uniform and presentable when we're done. Okay. Like this. Okay. So there we go. And then once you've done that, to your satisfaction, just tie a regular knot, like so. And then I'm going to cut off the excess pieces when I'm done. So I'm going to go around every inch or so, and just once, twice, tie, and then a knot. Okay, guys, not very complicated. So I'll continue to do this, and uh, I'll be back in the second to show you how it looks like when we're all done. All right guys, so here it is, all seasoned up, all tied up, you can see, it just holds everything together. Now, I'm just gonna put this in the fridge, in a tray for a few hours. It's not even three o'clock, the kids aren't home from school. Uh, I'm anticipating this is only gonna take a couple hours <coughs> on max, <coughs> maybe three hours total, because I am gonna start off smoking, I got a little wood chip tray. I'm going to put some cherry wood chips, uh, chips in there. Just have one burner going just to get some smoke on this while it's rotisserieing in the grill. And then I'll turn on the side burners. I want to try to bring the grill up to around 400 degrees. And then we're just going to bring this up to an eternal temperature of 145. I'll probably remove it around 141, 142 and cover it and let it come up the rest of the way so we don't overcook it. But look at how beautiful. We're just going to let the seasoning kind of sweat into the meat. If you see some spots here where you need to just sprinkle a little bit more rub, feel free to do that. I did sprinkle a little bit on the top here. There it is, guys. So in the meantime, since I got some time to kill, I am ready for a beverage. It's a hot day today. I will meet you guys downstairs at, in the bar for a drink. See you there. All right, guys. While we're waiting to put that pork on, time for a beverage. First beer of the day. I'm having a beer from New Belgium. They always have interesting... Uh, uh, pictures or drawings voodoo ranger juice force ipa this is a hazy imperial ipa it says it's nine and a half percent alcohol and uh where is new belgium from i think they're from colorado uh let me see i can't quite see but that's what i'm having i've had a few of their other beers i bought a variety pack maybe a year ago and they're all pretty solid beers Fort Collins, Colorado. And I like it. It's a big can. So that's what I'm having. Kids are going to be home from school probably in around a half hour. So I figure I'll get a beer in real quick before I get home. And then in around an hour or so, we'll get that pork loin on the rotisserie. Never had a rotisserie pork loin. So hopefully this will come out good. All right. First things... It's uh, definitely hazy. It's light. Let's give this a smell here. Oh yeah. I smell fruit and I smell hops. It is an IPA so hopefully that won't be the hop bitterness will be taken down a little bit by the sweetness of the fruit. Again guys, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, that's good. Wow. Very fruity. Like, I taste tangerine, oranges, and a little bit of a hoppy kick at the end, but not very, not very strong, because it is definitely more fruity than hoppy. Maybe that's why they're calling it juice force, because it, it, yeah, it definitely has a fruity, like a tangerine, a strong tangerine flavor. It's very hazy too, you can barely see it. Lightly carbonated. This is good, I'm gonna enjoy this. All right guys, like I said, I'm gonna enjoy this. Uh, we'll come back in a little bit. We're ready to get that pork on the grill. Until then, see you in a little bit. All right guys, so even though I'm using my new Monument grills, I wanna get some smoke flavor. So they sent me this smoke box and I'll show you here, I just put some cherry wood chips. I might have to load up some more wood chips depending on how long this produces some smoke. But I'm just gonna put it on the burner out there. And uh, yeah, initially I'm just gonna have that one burner lighting or heating this up to produce some smoke for probably the first half hour, 45 minutes. Then we'll kind of turn on the other burners to kind of start the cooking process. But if you don't have this, you can use like a, a 
some foil, put some wood chips in there, or any kind of smoker box. But I would definitely recommend that if you like a little smoky flavor like I do. Alright guys, let's get that uh, pork loin onto the rotisserie. Alright guys, so here's the pork loin. Here's my rotisserie thing here. And I've already tightened this one down kind of where I think it needs to be. This side is pointed, so this is going to be relatively easy, I think. And I'm going to try to compress it a little bit on this rotisserie as well. So what we want to do here is we want to try to get this right in the center, obviously. And it's got a little pointed end, so it should be relatively easy. We're just going to keep pushing as it goes through. Hopefully I won't have any problems with it coming up. Yep. So let's just continue to push. And this is relatively small, so I don't know if this will pinch the meat or not. There we go. All right. So now let's get the other one on, like so. We'll just kind of put it on there. See? Let's see if I can just kind of compress it a little bit. kind of hold it in a little bit just to make it easier to hold everything together let me tighten this bolt so there we go let's give it a sample turn but of course the real the real key is whether or not it turns okay on the grill so I'll meet you guys outside let me take these gloves off we'll give it a sample run if everything looks okay we'll uh, start those uh, cherry chips to start smoking and we'll put some smoke on this meet you guys outside all right guys so here we are this is my monument 605 pro denali series i did a review i'll leave a link below but i got that rotisserie on there now obviously i removed some of the grates here because for one thing i want to put the wood chip thing here like right here initially i'm just going to light this one burner on the left hand side here just to kind of get these things smoking. I'm going to leave everything off just to kind of get some smoke flavor with the lid closed on this. And the reason I removed the grates is because I want to get a tray under here because this might drip. So that's why I'm going to put a little bit of liquid in here. And you can see it's going to rest. It looks like a neighbor's dog is barking at something over there. <laughs> it never fails. But let's turn this rotisserie on just to see how things look when it turns on. I got a little portable battery pack here. All right, let's see. You just want to make sure when it turns, it turns evenly. Nothing's flapping. Nothing's unbalanced. There we go. Let's try that. Okay. And, you know, it looks like one of these aluminum trays here. If I put a little bit of water in there to kind of stabilize it, it should be perfect to collect any kind of drippings. So I think this is pretty much perfect, guys. So uh, let me go get some warm water. We'll fire the one burner over on the left side, get that smoke box going, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, since we are on a rotisserie, a regular meat thermometer, like the one that comes, the two that come with this grill, obviously won't work because the course will get all wrapped up. So I'm using the Chef Temps wireless meat thermometer i did a review on this i'm super impressed with this guy so i would highly recommend it i'll leave a link below for that as well but what we're going to do now we're going to stick this in here somewhere in the center and let's see here easier said than done i don't want it to hit the obviously the rotisserie but i want it to be far enough in let's just try like maybe i gotta go in. I think that ought to do it. And then what I'm going to do now, I got some warm water. We're going to put some warm water in here just to kind of, mainly to stabilize this tray because it's kind of lopsided and I think I'm having some weight on there. Let me see if I can kind of get this. Well, not really. Maybe if I bend it a little bit, it is a... Uh, there we go. Well, let's see. Boy, that dog is barking at something, always when I'm trying to film. So just like that, it looks perfect. Okay. So, 
Let me just take my camera off the tripod here to show you. I put the wood chip here, wood chip uh, smoker box there. I got this heater, uh, this burner right here on low. Let me turn the rotisserie on. I'll give it a second. There we go. I'm going to close the lid. Let me just take a quick look here, make sure everything's turning properly. And see what I meant about trussing up the roll. You just want everything to be held in place. Looks like everything's fine. All right. So we got a temperature uh, gauge here too. I just turned on. It's reading 75 degrees, which is probably like outside temperature, but we'll kind of close that up. Right now, I'm not really concerned about heating or starting to cook this. I just want to get some smoke. So let me keep this on low. Let's see if we get some smoke to be produced. I love this clear view window. And uh, if we start to get some smoke, um, great. Then I'll be able to kind of keep it on here for probably around 45 minutes. In the meantime, let's turn this bad boy on. And we should be able to catch a reading here. It usually takes a while. I'll also uh, open up the app on my phone. Okay, so the temperature of the pork is 45 degrees. And, uh, oh, I better, I got to set the temperature on my phone. So let me go inside. I'll do that. In the meantime, we'll give this a few minutes to start to get some smoke going. All right, guys, to kind of facilitate this smoke box to start smoking, I just removed, I don't know what you call it, the heat deflector, the thing right over here. I just got the straight burner. So let's get this lit up again. I turned it off just to, okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn that on low. And now I'll be able to put this grill box right on top of that burner. I'll probably set just a little bit offset, just like that. And now this should be getting plenty of heat to kind of get everything to start to smoke. In the meantime, let's close this up. You can see right here. That thing is just turning beautifully. We'll close this. <clears throat> so now let's set up our, my cook here with the chef temp. We're gonna do pork, we're gonna do pork loin. It defaults to 145, which is where we want it to end up, but I'm gonna set it to 140, because, well, let's do like, I'll do 138. We'll start to do some temperature readings with my instant read, because we want to remove it no later than 140, because we don't want to overcook it. So start cook. Well, there we go. Internal temperature, 45 degrees. And you know what? I can already smell some smoke. I'll give this a few minutes, guys. We'll come back. Just verify that this thing is getting some smoke. I can always refill the tray. Oh, I can already tell, guys. That didn't take long at all. So if you're doing this on your gas grill, yeah, you see the smoke coming from that, that box? You definitely need to put it directly over the burner. That little heat deflector is uh, kind of preventing it because it was in the center. It just would take too long. So this is perfect. Okay. So there we go, guys. We'll let it go for a little bit. We'll come out and check it in a little bit, see what's going on. All right, guys, it's been five minutes. The temperature of the grill is only 79 degrees because I just have that one burner on the far left on low. But I don't know if you can see the smoke coming out here. I'll just open it up real quick just to show you. Yeah, we got smoke going. So what I'm going to do now is just let this thing absorb some smoke. I'm not worried about cooking it. We'll just let it sit in here. I'll let it sit for half hour, 45 minutes. Then I'm going to try to get this grill temperature up to around 400 to start the cooking process. I'm not going to turn any of the burners on directly underneath. We're going to kind of do this like a stove. I'll probably turn this one on high and the fire one over here on high. We'll kind of see where the temperature is. If need be, I might have to turn on the other ones as well just to get that temperature in the 400 range. And yeah, we should be ready to go, but man. See that smoke coming out. This is how you turn your gas grill into a smoker. Loving this Monument Grills Denali 605, baby. It is nice. All right, guys. We'll come out in a little bit. Check it out. All right, guys. It's been around 10 minutes. I came out here. I actually saw flames coming out. So it was getting way too hot. So I still have this burner on low. 
I just moved it a little bit to the side here just to kind of let that smoke kind of not you know I don't want all those chips to, <laughs> to, to get super hot and start on fire so I think we're fine we'll continue to let this smoke for a little bit be back shortly all right guys this has been exactly at 79 so I don't think that uh, one burner over here is doing much uh, heating so I'm gonna turn this burner on high the smokes kind of settled down and I think I'm gonna turn this burner over on the other side on high because let's get this thing starting to cooking and maybe I think I'll turn this one on low just to kind of see where we're at this one over here is an infrared burner so I'm, I'm gonna hold off on turning that on so I got the two outer ones on high and then this one on low and uh, yeah we'll let that smoke box continue to send some smoke I just want to try to get this thing heated up so the cooking process can start so we'll be back shortly all right guys so I've turned on the two burners here on high I have the end one on high and this one on just above low I'm trying to get it up in that 400 range it's at 333 which is fine if I can't get it quite up to 400 I don't want to turn these two burners on right underneath this pan because it's literally resting the pan on there and I don't want to do that I'm still getting a little bit of smoke from the smoke box there she is looking good so yeah I think I'll just leave it like this looks like it's uh, was it 331 drops to 329 if, if I can keep it in that 330 325 range we'll, we'll be fine this shouldn't take too long but yeah that's what I got high low these two off high high and that rotisserie right in the middle yeah I'll let it go we'll uh, start to prepare the glaze in just a minute all right guys so now I'm going to show you how to make this very simple glaze that consists of three ingredients we're doing equal parts so I decided on a half a cup so I already have in here a half a cup of honey and like I mentioned before use the good stuff this is local from Wisconsin here we're gonna add a half a cup of maple syrup not the maple flavored syrup but the real pure maple syrup you want the good stuff here I mean if you're gonna go through the trouble of cooking this you might as well get the good stuff okay so half a cup of honey half a cup of maple syrup and then a half a cup of your favorite bourbon I have some Evan Williams so I got a half a cup of that just like that guys and now all we're gonna do I'm gonna put this on the stove top we're gonna bring this to a simmer and we're gonna kind of let it kind of heat up and simmer and reduce down and turn more into a syrupy liquid this is going to be the glaze we're going to apply on that pork loin during the last part of the cook it's as simple as that and I've used this glaze on quite a few things I've used it on uh, baby back ribs and I've also used it on a, a smoked ham it's really good and you know what I'm all for simplicity so <laughs> three ingredients yeah simmer it in a saucepan Coat it on whatever you're cooking, it comes out great. But there you go, guys. I'll put this on the stovetop. We'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, it's approaching an hour. I got it stabilized right in that 340 to 350 range, which is, looks like what I can expect with how I have these burners set up. And like I mentioned before, I don't want to turn these burners on. So that will be fine. So let's take a look here. Still got a little bit of smoke coming out of my... Uh, smoker box I'll probably put a little bit more chips in there just to keep a little bit of a light smoke on there but look at it guys right now it's saying the internal temperature is 83 degrees we can already see a little bit of this uh, bubbling on there as it gets a little bit heated up man this is looking good alright guys we'll just let it roll all right, guys now we're gonna apply this wonderful glaze and it's nice to have the rotisserie because I don't have to worry about getting all the sides <laughs> and yeah in this case definitely make sure you got some kind of tray or something under on the underside since this is pretty much just about there I turned both 
everything off except the two very end burners on low just to kind of keep the heat up a little bit to kind of get this sauce to caramelize a little bit hey guys it's been a couple minutes here like I said I just have those burners on the side on low just gonna drip some more of this sauce now normally you know with any meat like this you would pull it off and you would put it on your cutting board and cover with foil, tent it with foil for 10, 15, 20 minutes just to kind of let all those juices kind of settle but you know what I'm going to do? there's one exception to that rule and that's when you're cooking something on a rotisserie what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let it cool right here so let me turn off both my burners on both sides and I'm just gonna let that rotisserie continue to turn and I'm gonna close the lid and we'll just let that residual heat just kind of slowly come down I'm gonna let it sit in here the side dishes aren't quite ready we'll let it sit in here for a good 20 minutes half hour continue to turn that'll that'll allow all those juices to settle then I'll bring it inside on the cutting board there you go guys we'll be back shortly all right guys so it's been turning here for around 20 minutes oh look at this thing oh it smells wonderful all right it is ready I'm going to carefully well first I'm going to turn off this rotisserie and then I'm going to carefully remove this and I'll put it in the, on the cutting board and just let it kind of cool down it's still kind of warm we'll slice into this we'll be back in a minute hi right, guys here it is let me cut these strings here real quick get everything situated here come back in a second we'll slice this up Oh yeah, oh it smells wonderful. I still got a little bit of that uh, glaze left over that we can put on the slices. But you see how that, uh, by tying it up, kind of just kept everything together nice and neatly. Alright guys, let me get this situated. We'll be back, slice into this in just a second. Alright guys, there we are. Look at this thing. Man, oh man. Okay, I'm just going to slice right down the middle. And it's kind of nice here because I put the, the string. Let's take a look inside. There we go, guys. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to slice some slices. Not too thin. Maybe just like this here. I mean, look at all the liquid here, too. Oh my goodness, it smells wonderful. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it is full of juice. Cooking on the rotisserie, I think, definitely helps it maintain that juiciness. We'll slice off of this side and look this pork tenderloin is typically very inexpensive as far as other meats but boy look at this all right I'm gonna continue to slice this and I'll get Monica out here we'll give this a sample in just a second all right I'm here with my wife Monica here's this delicious Hi. rotisserie Smoked pork loin. It smells so good. I have a little bit of this bourbon honey glaze that's been simmering. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna drop some of this uh, on here like this. A drizzle, not drop, I guess drizzle, right? Drizzle, yeah, <laughs> not drop. I'm gonna just drop it on. No, you're gonna drizzle it. Kind of add a little bit of that flavor, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, now, that's good. It smells good. Let's take a piece here. Dixie, go back. <laughs> Dixie. My here. dog is like, or our dog is like, oh my gosh. 
She doesn't get any. I'm gonna cut one of these pieces. I'll, I'll couple, cut a couple of these pieces. Boy, there's a lot of juiciness as you can see in my cutting board here. Yeah. All right. It looks good. It smells. No, I don't. I don't see a uh, a smoke ring per se, but let's see. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Grab a piece. Okay. All right. Cheers. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. I appreciate it. Mm. Oh, I like the flavor. Mm, the glaze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Something about that real Wisconsin maple syrup and the honey. No, that's good. A little, there's a little bit of bourbon in there. I don't taste the smoke. No. It's but not. the flavor's not bad. The moistness is good. Well, but I, I, don't, I don't taste the smoke. I can't expect it to be super smoky because I did it on my gas grill. But, of course, I use that smoke box. But, yeah, it didn't really... Not Give disappointed it. or it. No, no, case. it's very delicious. I don't really taste the smoke either, but I think it's just because we're so used to the smoking. I guess smoking, I expected that, like, right? On a smoker but, from start to finish. Yeah. But it is delicious. No, it, really, is, it is good. And it's tender and it's moist. Mm. That I'll give you. I just don't taste that smoke. What, what, what I'm highlighting here really... But it smells smoky when you were cooking it. No, no, because we have it right here by the window okay. and the smoke is coming in. Oh, it did smell good. I thought it was going to get What I really want to highlight here is cooking it on the rotisserie and having it turn and turn. It's it got a very good. nice crust. It's very juicy. Yeah. You know? For sure. Oh. I agree. What do you think? Yeah? No, I agree. Totally. 100%. Juicy as heck. Not dry at all. Mm -mm. And you know what? Don't expect smoky, I guess, in this case. I guess it was high hopes. It smelled well, smoky when he was cooking it. It's not smoky. There's if no I smoke rotisserie break. cooked it like but, maybe over a Weber kettle grill or something with real charcoal and wood, uh, it would obviously have more, more smoke yeah. flavor. But you know, you have limitations with a gas grill. But hey, but I was trying the to highlight. The flavor profile's there. You no, know, the flavor's good the in that flavor's glaze. Good. Yeah, I would highly recommend this, guys, mm -hmm. if you've never tried it. And that mm -hmm. uh, the little bit of that uh, crust on there is really good. No, and fun. you can tell it's still a little juicy. It's like not quite pink, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's good. Slightly pink. This is definitely a a win for yeah. sure. It's just different than I thought it would be, mm. but nonetheless, delicious. The the marinade is delicious. No, I the recommend that maple honey bourbon glaze on just about anything you want to cook, guys. It's Three not ingredients, too sweet. Very easy. You don't taste if you don't like bourbon. You're like turned off by the taste of or the sound of like a bourbon glaze. I don't just taste bring, any bourbon. No, no, you bring it to a simmer. You're just yeah. getting the flavor. I don't taste out. bourbon. It and burns. then even even the thought of maple or honey, well, you think it's all too sweet. No, it actually is really. Well, you need it with pork. I think you need a little bit of it's sweetness. It's cohesive though. With mixed with that salty rub, which I can taste too. Oh, yeah. It balances each other it does. Out very it well. It does. It does. It's really good. It's not too sweet. As always, guys, I appreciate you stopping by. If you liked the video, hit the like button. This logo on my shirt is the logo on the bottom of the screen He's here. He's the Smoke King. Please click on that. It allows you to subscribe to my channel. Please do that because it really helps my channel grow. And uh, I'll put a link above and below to my website, ericsmokingbarbecue.com. That's where I have all my video recipes, photos, descriptions, recipes spelled out, the whole bit. The whole thing. <laughs> so go check that out. And thanks again, man. If you want to get have an inexpensive meal, and you got one of these monument grills with this rotisserie kit? Yeah. Then you better use it because that's a waste if you don't. Obviously try a chicken. That's you know, that's the go-to rotisserie, but right. I wanted to try something different. And I'm glad I tried this. Pork loin is good. It is good, and it's rather inexpensive. Yeah, the secret is don't overcook it. When you get to that 145 range, pull it off, cover it, or let it like I do. Let it spin for another half hour, turn everything off, just let it settle. And I brought it in here, I covered it with foil for around 10 minutes before I sliced it. But it's good. Yeah. Mm. It's wonderful. Yeah, I like it. Very mm. good. I think Kyle's going to like it too when he can eat it. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, guys, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye.